What is single carrier frequency domain multiple access? And why is it used in the uplink of 4G mobile communication systems? Well, let's start by looking at OFDM, which is used in the downlink. And you can find videos on OFDM on the channel. In OFDM, you put your data into a vector and perform an inverse discrete Fourier transform, which gives you a vector which you clock out in the time domain. Because this is sent in time, this vector corresponds to frequency. So it means that you are using parallel subchannels, different frequencies, and you're putting a different constellation point, different complex number representing your data into each of these subchannels. And this has a lot of advantages because it means that equalization is easy to do. Each subchannel is independent of the others, and you simply need to invert the gain in that subchannel at the receiver to recover your original data. But it comes with a problem, and that is that it can be that in the time domain, you have a high peak to average power ratio, because some of these subcarriers might add up at a certain time, all in phase, giving a high peak power. Again, there's more videos on the channel relating to peak to average power ratio. Now in OFDM, you can mitigate this by doing things like rotating some of the subcarriers. If you, if you detect that it has a high peak to average ratio, you rotate some subcarriers, repeat this process, get a, another vector which you send instead of the original one, and you're overcoming the problem. Of course, you'd need to embed data into your signal to tell the receiver which subchannels were rotated. There's other techniques as well. The, all of these techniques require extra power and complexity in the transmitter. So they're fine on the downlink because your base station has lots of power and can do complex operations. But on the uplink, this can be a problem. So what about the uplink? Now let's look at that case here where you've now got two users sending on the uplink with OFDM. Now what would they do? For example, one thing they could do is that the first user could put its constellation points into every second frequency subchannel. And then the other user could use the other frequency subchannels was interleaving in frequency. And so this is a, a OFDMA, which was called OFDM with multiple access. Uh, now, each of these users is still going to have the problem of having high peak to average ratio unless they do something about it. Now, they don't want to do that other process I talked about because it's computationally intensive in, at the transmitter. And on the uplink, the transmitter is a handset with a small battery and low limited computational power. So what can you do on the uplink? And this is where SC FDMA comes in. Effectively, what you are doing is OFDM, but with some pre-coding. So let's think about that for a minute. So what was the, the good feature about OFDM was that you are able to use different frequency bands and, there, and do a, an easy equalization. Uh, the good thing about not doing OFDM, if you simply sent these constellation points in the time domain, then in the time domain, you would have a bounded peak to average ratio. Because if you just sent like conventional old fashioned communications, then you're just sending QAM at, in time. Uh, and that does have a bounded peak to average ratio. The problem with that was the equalization which is one of the main reasons we moved to OFDM systems. So is there a way to get advantages of bounded in time and also having the ability to do equalization in frequency? And that's what we're getting with SC FDMA with the pre-processing. So what is this pre-processing? Well, you might be surprised to find that the pre-processing is to do a DFT. And this can be somewhat surprising because it, you're going to be following it with an IDFT and these two operations invert each other. Well, they don't exactly invert each other here, of course, because we're doing this frequency expansion in the multi-carrier uplink case. So the output of the DFT gets put into these subcarriers here. 
which means that the resulting time domain sequence is not going to be the same as this sequence here. Now what we achieve by doing this is that this sequence will have a bounded peak to average ratio because we're putting constellation points into this sequence. This sequence is in the time domain. We go into the frequency and we go back to the time. It's definitely in the time domain. And what we are looking for is that the bounded peak to average ratio of this sequence carries forward into a bounded peak to average ratio of this sequence. So that we're getting the dual benefits of bounded peak to average ratio of the time domain sequence and also the ability to do equalization in the frequency domain and have multiple access by having orthogonal subcarriers. So why would it imply that with this bounded peak to average ratio that this would also have a bounded peak to average ratio? Well, look out for a video coming up on the channel which goes through this in mathematical detail, but intuitively we can resort to some fundamental Fourier transform properties. And that is that if you expand in one domain, then you contract in the other domain and that that is all that you're doing. So here we are expanding in the frequency domain. We're taking, in this case, four, a vector of length four and expanding it into a vector of length eight. So that is a frequency expansion. And what that's going to mean is you're going to get a time domain contraction. So what's going to happen in the time domain is you're going to get a repeat of this sequence here. So this sequence here is now going to be uh, sent in the first four slots here. Uh, and then repeated in the next four slots. And this whole sequence is sent over the same time period as this sequence is here. So because of that same time sequence, I've drawn it being longer here, but that's just because there's more elements in this vector, but this vector gets sent over the same time as this vector here. So there is a compression in time. And so that means that the bounded peak to average ratio here exactly holds for this sequence here, because this sequence is just a repeated version of this sequence. Now it turns out for the other user, it's not simply a repeated version because it's not using the zero frequency. This is offset in frequency. In this case, we also need to check that the bounded peak to average ratio holds, but it turns out that it does. What happens here is you get phase rotated versions of the data sequence here. And so this also has a bounded peak to average ratio. So this approach of pre-filtering with a DFT achieves both the desired effects of being able to equalize in the frequency domain and have a time sequence with a bounded peak to average ratio. And this linear pre-coding process is much less computationally intensive than the other peak to average ratio reduction techniques I talked about before. So this is ideally suited to being done in the handset on the uplink. So why can't we just do this on the downlink as well? If we get a sequence which has finite peak to average ratio, we could surely just do the same thing on the downlink. So why don't we do that? Well, the reason for that is to do with the receiver. I haven't mentioned it yet, but by doing this linear precoding, you have to undo the linear precoding at the receiver. So let's think about the operations going on in the receiver. We have the DFT, which is part of the standard OFDMA. And then we have an IDFT, which is reversing the operation of the DFT linear precoding that happens in the transmitter of SCFDMA. So let's first think about the operation of the OFDMA equalizer. Well, it equalizes each of these subchannels separately by inverting the channel gain on those subchannels. Now let's just think what happens if one of the subchannels is in a null. With standard OFDMA, you would simply lose the data in that subchannel and all the other subchannels would be decoded correctly. But in this case with FC FDMA, when, you, when it then goes through the IDFT, that single subcarrier will affect all of the time domain data. And so this then will cause a problem where errors are happening in all of the data. And that would then need to be equalized in the time domain. And that is a much more intensive process. 
So again, on the uplink, that's fine because this operation is happening in the base station, which has access to a lot of power and computational processing. But on the downlink, you would have to do, the, if you were to use SCFDMA on the downlink, you would have to do that processing in the handset. And again, that would come at the expense of battery life of your handset. So that's why you don't want to use SCFDMA on the downlink. Another reason why you don't want to use it on the downlink is because this process of doing them separately for each user is quite restrictive on the way that you're allocating data into the subchannels and the way you're using your resource block. If you do it together combined, then you've got much more flexibility and ability to be more efficient in the use of that resource block. And that's what you want on the downlink. So if this video has given you more insights into SC FDMA, uh, give the video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Check out the description below. You'll find a link to a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.